and welcome to another episode of Foobar. In today's episode, we are going to see how to write unit tests for your serverless application. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Thundra. Thundra is a serverless observability platform helping developers debugging, testing, and troubleshooting their serverless applications with no code change and zero overhead. You can see their demo environment by clicking the link in the description box. Thank you very much, Thundra, for sponsoring this video. This is the second video in the playlist of hunting errors in serverless applications. In the previous one, we talked about testing and we introduced the series. And in this one, we are getting our hands on on what is unit testing and how to write tests. So we are going to write unit tests in an existing application. So what are unit tests? When you do unit testing, you are testing individual parts of your code. You want to validate each unit of your application. A unit is the smallest testable part of any software. It can be a method, a function, a class. When writing unit tests, you need to make sure that you are testing that specific unit, not the dependency that that unit has. For example, if we are writing a unit test for a model that calls Dynamo, we just need to test the module, not how Dynamo works. We will see an example on how to do this later on in the video. Unit tests are important in serverless applications, as they are in traditional applications. They help you to know if some change that you did in the code broke the functionality. Also, it kind of helps like auto-documentation. Uh, unit testing also helps you to code easily, because when you have unit tests, you usually have kind of um, easier architecture and simpler architecture and more decoupled architecture. So usually your application will uh, be better and it will force you to have models with very clear separations of concerns because when you have all that, it's way easier to create tests. When you do unit testing, you want to get help from some framework. That framework will help you to run the test and also to mock the dependencies and provide libraries for different validations. We will be using Jest for our example and I will show you a little bit more about Jest when we get there. In this video, I will show you how to create basic tests using Jest. Then we will learn how to create tests and mocks for our application if our application is using Dynamo, for example. And I will show you different ways to create mocks. So let's go to the code and get started. The first thing we want to do is to create a new project. We are going to start with a new clean uh, serverless project. So I will call this one serverless unit test and I will just create a new serverless framework project there. I will speed this up until we get to the part that is new because we have been doing this for many, many videos. If you don't know how to get started, I leave you a playlist that explains everything step by step. So now when our file serverless yaml is clean we are going to start working on our functions we are going to create a new function called hello that basically will return hello world plus the name of the person that is in the query parameter so it's pretty straightforward and for that we are going to clean up a little bit the handler json the method hello that we get the name from the string parameters in the query and then we'll have a method that will be saying hello if there is a name and then we just return something. So it's a very, very simple thing. And one thing I'm going to do is to move all the files that are related to source to this source file. So source folder, so then we have everything in one place. There I will create this module called greeter that is the one that will take care of our business logic that will be saying hello if there is a name or not. So basically this is just returning a uh, hello word if there is no name and if hello whatever is your name if there is a name. Now I'm going to create a new folder called tests and I'm going to work on the greeter test that is testing this greeter module. To test something I said I will use a framework that will help me and I will be using Jest. So I'm going to install Jest in our dependencies, in our development dependencies so then we can use it. Just you can find all the documentation in this website called jest.io 
and you can see that it works with Node, React, Angular, Vue, Babel, TypeScript and way more so you just go and check the documentation, it's quite good and I've been using it for a while and I like it a lot. So now let's start writing the test. The, we want to test what happens if we send a message with no uh, name. So we write a message with no name, we shall say hello and then we expect that that returns hello world. So this is pretty straightforward. And in order to test this, to make sure that everything works, what we do is that we will run npm test. But for that to happen, we need to go to our package JSON and we need to go to the scripts and there we need to modify the test script. So when we do npm test, we run jest. And when jest command is run, then it's running all the tests that are available, all the files that are with dot .test are being tested. So when we do that, npm test, then we run all the tests. We have one test and everything is green and happy. So that's good, very simple. Then we can do the same to test with there is some name and we can make sure that tests are passing. Yay! Great, so now let's go back to our serverless YAML and work a little bit in something more complicated. So we are going to add another function called moi, that means hello in Finnish. And that function, what we'll do is to save the name into the database and we'll return hello world. So we need to create a new table, dynamo table. I will not go into the details of what this table does. You can find uh, more information on this video. I leave you in the card. So basically now we have a table that will collect all the names. That's the primary key. We are giving permissions to get the names and save the names. And then I'm going to put the name of this table as an environmental variable because it makes life easier. If you want to know how to use environmental variables, there's also a video in the cards that you can go and check. So now let's go and to our handler and create the uh, handler method for this moi function. Basically it's exactly the same as the hello world. But instead of calling from the module grid, say hello, it's calling say hello and record. And we are need to create that method. What we want to do is to say hello, depending if there is a name or not. And then also we want to save this name into our database. So if there is no name, we don't save it. But if there is a name, we are going to save it. And for that, we need to create a new method called record greeting. Then record greeting, what we'll do is we'll create a new item that will be stored in the database with the name that is the primary key and the timestamp that is the date of today. And it will send it to a, another module called database manager. So here you can see that we are passing the responsibility of storing the item to another module. We will go to our database manager and we are going to create it. And also what this happens, if we want to change the database tomorrow to some, uh, I don't know, SQL database or something else, then we can um, just use another database manager and we don't need to change this code. So the code is very stable in that way. We just need to change the dependency. So we go to this uh, DynamoDB port, I will call it our database manager, and I will create a new method called save item. You will think that this save item will store the data in the database, but no. I like to do it this way. So this save item knows everything about Dynamo. So it's very specific for Dynamo. And what we'll do is we'll create the params object. That is what uh, the AWS SDK document library takes. And we'll uh, have, this is very proprietary for Dynamo, this format. We need the table name, we need the item and we will have that and then this will call another module that will save the item into the database. Why I do this? Because in this way then I can analyze exactly what are the parameters passed to this database manager in my test and I can make sure that all the parameters are uh, correctly and I can test on those parameters and also I can create tests. So this database manager, the second one, second level, what we'll do is just wrap the Dynamo call. So it's not doing anything that, more than that, it's just a wrapper around. So this Dynamo port is doing a little bit of business logic by creating these params and also doing some cleanup in the, in the responses. But then 
the database manager is just a wrap around the Dynamo client. And in this way, it's very easy to get create tests to the DynamoDB port and to the greeter because they don't have any external dependencies. So now we can go to the test file and create a new uh, file. We could have it in a normal scenario in the greeter test, but I want to show you two ways of mocking uh, something using Jest. They are different and they have different use cases depending on what you want to do. So let's go to the first way that is to have the mock in the same file. So what you need to do is just to require the module that you are going to um, test. And then you need to also require the module that you are going to mock. In this case, we are going to mock the DynamoDB port. First thing you need to do is to return something for when the, the mock method is called. So we have this say hello and record method in the greeter module that is the one that we are testing and then if we want to go inside that method there is a call to this DynamoDB port a module that is calling save item so we want to mock that in this case save item doesn't return anything so we just mock it into this chest.function and that will do the trick and we can also see how many times that was called so it's pretty neat and then we don't need to create any connection to Dynamo or anything. This is just a great way to just focus on your business logic. When we test this, we realize that the AWS library is missing and that's because Lambda doesn't require it, but we need it for our test. So what we are going to do is install it in our de uh, developer dependencies and there we can use it for our test. So now we can run the test and see that this is working. So now let's go and create one more test. For that, we are going to create it in the new way of creating test that is using the mock file. So here we want to do is to also require the module that we are going to test, this case greeter, and then we are going to do just mock and we are going to put the name of the module that we want to mock. In this case, the database connector, it doesn't matter. That's the one connecting to Dynamo. So the next thing we need to do is to create inside our source code a folder, a, another folder called underscore underscore mocks underscore underscore. And then inside there, put another file with exactly the same name that we want to mock. When we have that, then in there we can create the methods that return the mocking responses. So in this case of the save item, we just return an empty promise. And then we can go back to our test file and there we can just write the test as if everything was, um, we don't need to specify any mocking in the test or anything. We just call the method and then we expect it to be something. And that's really cool way of writing the test because the test doesn't get polluted with any mocking data. So these are the two different ways to create uh, mocks. I use them depending on the case, one or the other, and they are quite good. So now let's create a third function. Now this function will return uh, 200 if the name was already greeted or 400 if not. So we are just checking if somebody was greeted already. So we are doing more operations on Dynamo. And for that, we are going to create in our handler that method. And if the method was created, then we are going to return 200 and if not 400. We need to create a new method in our module greeter that is called was greeted. And what it does is basically check it if the item exists in the database. So we need to create in our DynamoDB port if there is uh, an item. So we can do that, create a new method called get item, we pass a name and then we build the params for the calling Dynamo. And then in the DynamoDB connector, we just uh, do the wrapping around the get with those parameters. as so we did before. Good. So now we can create a mock for each of the cases. So if we are in this uh, function mocking, what we will do is we will create a new item and we are putting some name and some timestamp. And then we are going to um, attach the return value to this uh, operation to the DynamoDB port get item. We are uh, 
kind of attaching the item to be returned. So every time this operation is called, it's going to return the item. So then we can uh, make sure that everything is working. And it goes in the same way if we want to um, have a greeting that doesn't have any results, like an undefined, so we can um, attach to the database manager mock, to the DynamoDB port get item, we can attach the undefined there. And whenever this method is called, it's just returning undefined. And you can see that every test can have different values. So this is one nice thing from this uh, way of testing because then every test has different values and you can configure them on the fly there. So I like this method quite a lot. And then if we are using this uh, mock file, then we need to create a new method called getItem. And whenever we pass a name, we just return a promise with that name. So this is pretty straightforward. If there is, um, we just call that module and then we expect it to be true. So it's pretty simple because we have the, done the mocking on the top of the file in line four when we decided, okay, this is, you need to use the mock file. So now let's create tests for the Dynamo port. So if you want to do a little bit more tests on the wrapping on how things are done. So let's do a test to get an item so we want to get an existing item. So for that, we are going to use the inline mocking in the file, in the same file. So we are going to create an, uh, an item that is a name and a timestamp. And then we are going to attach that item to the response of the database connector get item. And then we just call um, the method get item with that name. And then we can see that we can validate the parameters that this mock was called with. And I really like that because that when you have complicated queries to the third parties, this can really help you out on validating things are being created properly. In this case, it's a very simple query, but then in other cases, we can have very complex. In this case, you can see that the table name is undefined because it comes from the uh, environmental variables and we have not set it up. We can set it up for the test and it will be the name of the table, but just for this, I just leave the undefined. So now we can deploy and we can test in the HTTP uh, client that everything is working, but it will be working. You really don't need to worry too much because we have created uh, this unit test that makes sure that everything is working. and there is not that much need of doing a lot of intensive tests from the HTTP client. So let's speed this up and check very fast that the things are working. I will just show you very fast that if we create a new file in our HTTP client, I'm using some extension in here from uh, Visual Studio Code. And if I just ask for a name, I can see that it's working. And you can check it for all the different um, methods that they are all working. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And the next episode coming is about integration test. I hope you are waiting for that and want to know more about how to write integration tests in a serverless application. Around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.